Hey guys, Brendan Renner Productions here, and welcome to my 12th, at least I think it's my 12th, Vim tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to use colon settings in Vim in order to customize Vim to make it more uh, personalized. So everybody can use a combination of these um, base sets of commands in order to extend the functionality of Vim and make it more personal, make it more functional, make it more useful for you. So you can really build your own workflow using this, these customizations. So, um, I actually have this test.java file on my desktop, and we can go ahead and get started demonstrating this um, by opening this file in Vim. And as you can see here, this test file is nothing special, but that's because we're not even going to alter the code. I'm just using this code as a template in order to show how to actually use some of these settings. So, the settings are, can be set using a, a combination of the colon set and then a keyword pertaining to the setting. Um, so as you can see, if I were to type colon set, it brings me down to the bottom of the Vim window, just like any colon command would. And then I can go ahead and type space, and then I can type in what kind of, uh, what kind of command I would want to do. So for example, if you want to show line numbers in your Vim, you can go ahead and type set NU, which is short for numbers. And then as you can see, line numbers automatically appear. And line numbers are particularly useful because you can use them with the capital G in order to actually quickly navigate. So you can go ahead and type in like, for example, two capital G, and then it will bring you to line two, seven capital G, line seven. Now, I'm not going to be demonstrating every single uh, setting in this tutorial. However, I'm going to be demonstrating a few that I use and a few that other people use very commonly. So I just wanna make sure that everybody has a useful set of commands they can use to customize their Vim. Now in the next and final Vim tutorial, or at least, one of the final Vim tutorials, I'm going to be showing you how to save these settings permanently, and I'll show you even more settings that you can use in order to extend Vim to get it the way you'd like. So I just demonstrated how to set line numbers, and this is very useful. However, um, there's an even more useful line number command, and that is relative line numbers. So say you wanted to move three lines down, or let's just say in this particular code, we wanted to go to the line that says system.format. Now we could type five capital G, but that is just a tad slower than typing in 2j, because our hands are already resting on 2 and j. So how, would, how can we easily keep track of how many lines away the system.out.format is? Well, we can use the relative line numbering that Vim has, and this can be set with set rnu for relative numbering. And then once you do that, as you can see, it shows, um, it looks a little confusing at first, but basically this large number on the left is the line you're currently on, and then the numbers below and above show how many lines are below and above. So as you can see, the system.out.format line, it says 2, so you can just type in 2j. And then to get back to the beginning, we can type in 4k. Uh, very useful for very fast, quick navigation. However, it's not very useful if you want to detect what line number, um, for example, you're like, oh, how many lines of code are in this file? Well, you know that you're on line 4, then you have to add 3. If you have a large file, this could be very confusing, but it's very good for quick navigation. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like this, and I'm going to show you a few more commands. So one that is very also or also very useful is I'm not sure if this is turned on by default. And once again, you can or you can check all of the um, the values of or not the values. You can you can check what these commands output by using the commands without the set keyword. So for example, if we just wanted to learn what line number we're currently on, we can type colon nu for number. And as you can see, it displays the line number and the line that we're currently on in the bottom of the screen. Now, if you combine them with the set, that's when it actually um, makes things permanent. However, we could just simply use, um, and as you can see, rnu is not one that can simply display because it just shows your line. So. We can simply use these commands by themselves to actually display some information to us. However, it's much easier to just use the set command. So one thing that is also very useful, I'm pretty sure it's enabled by default. However, I'm going to demonstrate it anyway, is auto indent. So if we type set auto indent, um, what it basically does is it automatically indents if we um, open a new line. I believe that that's what auto indent does. So as you can see here, um, if we're typing in a comment, hello, this is a comment, and this is a comment block, it will automatically stay indented uh, for us. 
And I'm pretty sure that that's the functionality that auto indent has. Very useful, um, but I'm pretty sure it's set by, by default, so you don't need to worry about that. And just to show off another functionality of relative line numbers, um, as you can see here, we want to delete these three comments, these three lines of comments. You can see that they are indeed three lines long because of the relative line numbering, so we can just type 3dd and the comments are deleted. All right, um, another very nice command uh, is sometimes in Vim, if you, for example, if you navigate to the bottom of a file or the top of the file or left of the file and you just keep holding those buttons, um, it displays some sort of error message or error sound. I don't know if you could hear it coming through my headphones during the video, but you can definitely disable those by typing in colon uh, set no error bells. And then if you set that, um, well, I don't know if it's actually the error bells when you navigate to the top or the bottom, but this is a useful error com or a useful command because sometimes when you're working with Vim, there are some, some error noises uh, that you definitely want to disable. So you can use the set no error bells to disable those error noises. Okay, so there's, there's a lot of little tiny commands like that. However, I'm going to go ahead and skip a lot of the tiny ones and go to the big ones. So one of the biggest ones here is we can set show mode and this actually shows whether we're in insert mode or edit mode when we're when we're in insert mode. Uh, once again, that's not really a big one. Then we've got set color column. Now, a lot of times when you're programming, you want to make sure that your code kind of stays within a certain width. So if you want your code, for example, the standard on most code is actually 80 or 120 characters because those were the original sizes of original terminals way back in the day. So if you want to, to restrict the width of your code to make things a little nicer, um, you can go ahead and use the color column command, which actually draws a colored column on the screen in order to show you where that certain uh, pixel width is. So what I'm going to do is set color column equal to 80. And then as you can see here, there's a red column on the right side of our Vim. And this is actually at the 80 character mark. Um, so we don't want our code to surpass this 80 character mark uh, because it would make our code like too wide. We wouldn't be able to view it easily. So that's very useful for keeping your code nice and organized. I use this one quite often. Um, another one, I think that this one is also set by default, is uh, set ruler. So this ruler is the thing we have on the bottom right-hand corner of the Vim window, and it shows the line number and the column number of where we're currently working. Um, I don't really know what the number after the dash is. But, but the ruler is down here and it kind of gives positional information into where we are. All right, so another one that we, uh, we may want to set, I've demonstrated this in a previous tutorial, is no highlight search. So if we set no HL search, and then we go ahead and search for hello and press enter, you can see that the highlighting is disabled. So no highlight search, no HL search, makes searching a little quicker um, because we don't have that annoying highlighting that pops up all the time. So this is definitely a good idea. Um, now, one of the things you can do is you can actually set the background color using BG. So if we say set BG equal to dark, um, this actually puts it into a kind of background equals dark mode. Now, it doesn't actually change the color of the Vim window. Um, because in order to do that, you would have to set it in your Vim RC and then restart Vim. But it prepares the characters for you. Um, to be displayed on a dark or light screen. So as you can probably tell, if we set background equal to dark, these colors, the syntax highlighting becomes more vibrant, so we would be able to see it with a dark background. All right, and... Um, so this is, this, is, this is just a few set of commands. Now, one command that I really want to focus on is... Um, I covered the color column trying to restrict... Uh, the width of files because of some programming standards. Now another huge programming standard, now I've never really talked about programming standards before because I don't really want to cover that in, in programming tutorials. However, now that we're on to Vim tutorials, I can talk about this just a bit. Um, one of the programming standards that is kind of really important is tabs. Now, by default in Windows, tabs have their own character and I don't know how many spaces this character is. 
But the problem is that tabs are different depending on what editor you use. So this can make code problematic because it opens and looks different ways on any different editor. Um, so what you want to do is you want to actually, it is preferred instead of pressing of using tabs, like the tab character, you use spaces. So for example, this tabbed in line here, it's actually preferred to put, for example, two or four spaces in front of it instead of a tab character. So as you can probably tell, this would get annoying really quickly because you would have to press two spaces every time you want to indent something. But when you do this, the code becomes a lot more compact. It's still definitely readable. However, the code becomes much more compact and it's much easier to fit more code within that 80 character limit. Now you can actually set, uh, set up Vim so it does this automatically for you using the tab stop command. So if we go ahead and set tab stop equal to two, this actually makes the tab uh, key on your keyboard in simply increment by two spaces. As you can see, I'm pressing tab here and tab actually goes forward two spaces. Now you can do this however you want to customize your editor. So if you set tab stop equal to four, um, when you press tab, it actually increments four spaces. Whatever you set it to, setting tab stop equal to a certain amount of spaces is far superior to just letting tab be the tab character in Windows or whatever operating system you're using. It makes the code so on any editor somebody opens it with, it will have the appropriate number of spaces and the code looks the same across all platforms. Um, so this is extremely important. Personally, I set my tab stop equal to two when I'm coding um, because I like that nice compact, um, easily within 80 character limit. So this, these are kind of just an example of all of the uh, commands that I wanted to show you. There's nothing else really um, really that just like screams very important. Most of the stock Vim functionality is actually really solid. So you don't need to turn on or turn off a lot of options. However, just in case you may want to. Now one thing I'm going to try is I'm going to try to change the colors here. So I'm going to set colors or let's just say colors Elf Lord. I don't know if you can do this from the... Oh yes you can! Okay, so um, Vim also comes packed with a few color schemes. Now these color schemes are used to simply to change the coloring of your Vim. And um, I'm going to cover in the next tour where you can actually find these color schemes. I don't know offhand, but I know that the color scheme that I really like to use is called Elf Lord, and that is shipped with the default version of Vim. So if you type colon colors and then the name of the color scheme that you wish to, uh, did you wish to apply to your Vim. I'm going to supply a list of colors or a list of color schemes in the description of this video. Then you can type in the name and as I just did, I typed Elf Lord because that is the color scheme I use. And once you do that, it will apply the color scheme to your Vim. So now your Vim will look completely different and everything will look different. And I just like this dark color scheme because it's uh, less painful on the eyes when coding in the dark. Right then. So this is pretty much all the functionality I wanted to cover, um, how to customize your Vim to make it more personal to you. Now, everybody's Vim is going to be different, so um, there's definitely different ways to keep your, your settings, and I'll cover that in the next tutorial by using your Vim RC file. Um, so that will definitely be useful for all of you that want to keep your settings. Anyway, thanks for watching this tutorial. Sorry for the sporadicness of it. However, it's hard to stay focused when you have all of these options that you want to cover. Thanks again for watching. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in future tutorials. Peace.